Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Zhi Zhongyang. It's my pleasure to attend the ninth international workshop on advances in cleaner production. Hope you are all fine during this hard time of this pandemic. Although we cannot meet in and enjoy the beauty of Australia, the virus does not block our heart. First of all, I would like to express my acknowledgement to Advances Cleaner Production Network uh, for the award. It's really a full recognition and inspiration to me and my research group for what we have done in the past several years. Today, I will take this opportunity as a special keynote speech to report our works of recent years in food, energy, water nexus domain. The title is China US Integrated Systems Modeling of FEW Nexus for Urban Sustainability, which is funded by the International Cooperation Project of China National Natural Science Foundation. Clearly, the Nexus is now becoming buzzwords across the world. Why we need Nexus view on environmental management, even how to interpret the concept of Nexus and the different contexts. As we know, food, energy, and water are three essential resources for human society, but are faced with the growth in demand and the limited supply. Human society can live without iron and steel, like our ancestors in primary society, but we could not live without food, energy, and water. Today's world has achieved an unprecedented achievement of science and technology, but we are still facing great challenge of safe provision of food, energy, and water. Globally, the human resilience on food, energy, and water resources is projected to increase by 35%, 50%, and 40%, respectively, by 2030. The looming food security, fresh water shortage, and the fossil energy exhaustion are widespread. What's more, there is a intrinsic interlinkage between these three resources, which is framed by food and water nexus. For example, the production of food or energy at a location is limited by the availability of water. At the same time, our world has become increasingly urbanized with the increasing urbanization but growing resources scarcities. The screwing prevention has become a unique challenge for urban sustainability and attract extensive discussion on many top academic journals. To be specific, why do we talk about FEW in urban center? At present, more than 55% of the world population is now living in urban areas and this number is projected to rise to 68% by 2050. Due to their openness, urban systems draw on food and water outside of their physical boundaries and create environmental impacts which extended beyond city boundaries. Cities are critically important for advancing regional sustainable development and thus placed at the center of the FEW nexus. In such context, we applied a project and got funded under the framework of international cooperation initiatives of the Chinese National Natural Science Foundation. The objectives of our joint project are, first, significantly advance our understanding of the urban food energy water system through quantitative and computational modeling. Second, develop real-time interfaces that improve understanding of the behavior of urban FEW systems and increase decision support capability. Third, grow the scientific workforce capable of studying and managing the FEW system. This project is hosted by my research team of Beijing Normal University and Professor Ming Xu and her colleagues from University of Michigan Annabel, Dr. Li Xiaozhang, Yan Peng Cai, and Geng Yuan Liu, etc are all primary participants for this project. Beijing and Detroit are two main comparative case metropolitan areas. To achieve a fruitful and substantial progress for this project, 
We came close cooperation with the research team from Professor Xu of University of Michigan. Many academic activities have been organized in these four years. Many of our project members have also attended the eighth workshop of Advances Cleaner Production in Sanya and reported their research work individually. This is the research outline of our project. It contains five parts, including theoretical research, nexus analysis, materials flow analysis, and the influencing factors, network characteristics, and optimization and effectiveness analysis. At the beginning, we mainly focused on clarifying the concept of FEW nexus measures and the analytical framework. In the second step, the measures, for instance, LCA, MFA, were used to analyze the urban FEW nexus. After that, we explored metabolic pathways, identify the influencing factors. In the fourth step, we adopted network analysis and system dynamic analysis to identify the network characteristics and reveal the mechanism. Finally, based on the above analysis, we tried to establish an integrated optimization model to search the optimal path of FEW supply and demand, and then provide some policy implications. We hope such works will contribute to enhance FEW security and improve their utilization efficiency in a green urban economy and contribute significantly to the sustainable management of EW resources. Let's start from the new Nexus framework. The concept of the Nexus is not new. With traceable usage in many scientific domains, such as water, water culture, and the Nexus of socialism and political traditions. In the Oxford Dictionary, the Nexus is a connection or series of connections linking two or more things and the World Economic Forum at early the consumer advocated paying more to the separable linkages among the three sectors of food, energy, and water. Subsequently, many related studies consider that the Nexus referred to the complex and the linkage among resources system. The argument of resources centrality with the FEW Nexus also makes the concept and definition more diversified. For instance, Bonn Conference notices that water, especially available water, plays a central role in the Nexus. In addition, some scholars have extended the Nexus as a dual coupling between human being and nature. Mm. Therefore, we can see the concepts of the FEW Nexus exhibit a greater disparity among the international reports and the scholarly literature depending on their research goals. To make this more clear, we conducted a literature review. A total of almost 800 papers were identified and collected for the period from 1970 and 1919, based on the World of Science database. The related research keywords were energy agriculture, energy food, food water, energy food water, and energy food water land. It can be found that the majority of these papers were published after the Bonn conference in 2011. The dual sector studies were extremely popular with a strong focus on the energy water nexus. At the same time, the three pronged nexus of FEW has gradually attracted the interest of the scholars. And the publications in this field have increased sharply. Most of the research on the FEW nexus is concentrated on the global transboundary and the national scales, with less work on the urban scale. As we all know, all things in the universe are closely interrelated with one another. The typical example is the six degrees of separation, originally set out by Fergus Currency in 1929. It emphasizes that many two people who don't know each other can also have an inevitable connection or relationship through a certain contact pathways, no more than six types. In fact, in ancient times, Chinese philosophers had already proposed the five element theory, including gold, wood, water, fire, and ground. The system of five phases 
was used to describing interactions and the relationships between the phenomena. Over the long time evolution, international society put forward to the FEW nexus to highlight the interaction among these three important resources. There are very complex interactions among FEW systems, isolated infrastructure solutions aimed at just the one sector are no longer fit purpose. As the disturbance and the change in one part of the term can destabilize an, one, an, another part. For example, building an irrigation scheme to abstract water uh, upstream can reduce the amount of water available for hydroelectric power generation. Or in the case of natural infrastructure, cleaning the forest in the upper part of the catchment for agriculture will result in sedimentation of dams downstream and result in poor water quality that affect fisheries and uh, drinking water supply. Hence, there needs to consider the FDW nexus from an integrative perspective or holistic view. Since the interpretations and uh, the quality of the FDW nexus vary, numerous and uh, diverse measures and tools have been used in different contexts. In general, uh, those methods and tools had been directly borrowed or drawn from conventional plenary techniques, which can be roughly categorized into three types. For instance, resource environmental footprint quantification, assessment and systematic simulation, and optimal management measures. Our view reveal that the methods and the tool used in the FEW dominance uh, preliminarily draw from established techniques, making them very useful in understanding and illustrating the FEW nexus, but still subject to their original development purpose. As we talked before, the high intensity and the openness characteristics of urban systems has made the relationship between FEW more complex. Since the materials and the energy are transferred across regions along multi-phased supply chains, this calls for an innovative framework for urban FEW nexus study, moving beyond its narrow physical boundary and including interscale and intrascale interconnections to avoid unexpected consequences and problem shifting. Considering the diverse understandings and conceptualizations in the literature, a three-dimensional conceptual framework of the FEW nexus was proposed for urban systems in view of resource interdependency, resource prevention, system integration. Compared with the other framework, this framework was proposed from different perspectives and at different scales. It contains multi regions multi-objectives, and multi-stakeholders. The first perspective emphasizes the interactions among three resources and is useful to measure the resource efficiency. The second perspective can help us to investigate the tile connection mechanism between cities and their supporting regions with regard to urban FEW resources securities. The third one considers the internal interactions with and the interrelationship of external systems with FEW resources, and aims to realize that the regional coordinated management is worth noting that the analysis of the third one is based on the above two perspectives. Part two is flow analysis. As mentioned before, we first quantified the food, energy, water flows in details of Detroit in the US and Beijing in China to make a comparison. We constructed a FEW nexus framework at urban scale, which can be used to evaluate the urban flux structure efficiency for multiple ecological elements. And this framework, the open city system is linked to the global economic systems crossing multiple scales, for instance, city, region, national, global. Considering the dual nature of cities, multiple ecological elements flows are traced both from the orange and to the destination. Different ecological elements are incorporated into comprehensive and systematic nexus framework to optimize the correlation in the urban system. To explore the system leverage points, 
and uh, to balance the trade-offs, enhancing the existing synergies, both aimed to keep cities sustainability over time. Because of the complex interdependence of urban FEW systems, changing components of one system may lead to ripple effects on other systems. However, the inputs into sectoral flows, stocks, and outputs of these FEW resources from the perspectives of an integrated urban FEW system have not been synthetically characterized. Therefore, using the Detroit metropolitan area as a case, we developed an accounting method by using material and energy flow analysis to quantify this urban FEW nexus. The graphics on the left illustrate the simplified interactions of the urban FEW systems. Three panels describe inputs, interprocessed flow, and output of the food, energy, and water systems, respectively. In this study, we use nitrogen and uh, phosphorus flows as the currency represents the flows of materials in the food system. This figure shows the nexus among individual FEW systems. In particular, the food system used uh, about 400 million tons of water, and uh, it discharged about 400 million tons of waste water. 4,000 tons of uh, nitrogen and uh, 1,000 tons of phosphorus uh, to the water system through waste water flows. Food waste sludge and the landfill gas were in part used to generate 8 pj of electricity. On the other hand, the food and water systems used 63 and 4 pj of energy respectively. Moreover, the energy system withdraw 3,200 milliton of water from the environment and return the same amount of used water to the environment. We also quantify the FEW nexus in the Detroit and compare its FEW resources efficiency at certain processes with those in other cities. For example, the figure compares per capita nitrogen and uh, phosphorus intakes in the Detroit with those of other cities. Uh, per capita nitrogen intake in the Detroit, which is uh, about uh, 7.3 kg of per capita, is at the medium level among studied cities. This comparison indicates that uh, there are still potentials to reduce the pressure of the nitrogen and uh, phosphorus uh, demand in the Detroit. Our results help identify key processes for improving FEW resources efficiency in the Detroit. Uh, these measures include uh, one, optimizing the dietary habits, households to improve uh, phosphorus use efficiency. Two, improving efficiency disposal standards for nitrogen removal uh, to reduce nitrogen emission levels. Three, promoting adequate fertilization. And four, enhancing the maintenance of wastewater collection pipelines. For water use, improving the efficiency of a thermal electric power plant can help reduce water withdrawals. The method developed in this study can serve as a fundamental tool for the FEW resources management of uh, municipal governments. Let's see the other case, Beijing. We actually traced the origin of the destination of Beijing's energy water land in national regions from production and consumption perspectives. According to the bar chart in figure, consumption-based EWL flow pattern are different with the anomaly spatial distribution in China. Nearly 40% of the consumption-based energy flows, water and land use, were from north, northwest China and central China. However, a similar spatial distribution for each resource embodied in export that majority of uh, production based EWL flows to central coast provinces. Specifically for energy, about 53% of energy flow embodied in domestic imports was concentrated in the top of five provinces, Hebei, Inner Mongolia, Shanxi, Jiangsu, and Shandong. 
This can be attributed to the geographical advantages of these provinces. In addition, another potential reason can be the economic structure features of these provinces. Hebei, Inner Mongolia, and Shanxi, depending on heavy industry, are rich in resources such as energy and minerals and are major provider of coal and iron resources in the country. For water, approximately half of water used embodied in the domestic inflow of products was from Hebei, Shandong, Anhui, Heilongjiang, and Henan. By providing agricultural products and other water-intensive products and serves to the Beijing market, these provinces were able to certify Beijing's water use driven by final demand. For agricultural land use, more than half of land use embodied in the domestic inflow of products was from Inner Mongolia, Ningxia, Shanxi, Henlongjiang, and Sichuan. This result shows that Beijing satisfies its demand for land use by importing agroforestry and livestock products from these regions. This figure presents accurate resources and destinations of the EWL flow embodied in international imports and exports of Beijing. For Beijing's international EWL inflow, there are about 57% of energy, 57% uh, of water, and 57% of land use were embodied in products imported from uh, 39 countries and regions other than the ROW region. Specifically for international energy inflows, about 68% of international embodied energy inflow were concentrated from South Korea, the United States, Japan, Russia, and uh, Taiwan, China. In comparison, about 58% of international energy outflow was focused in the United States, Japan, Germany, Australia, and uh, South Korea. For international water inflows, approximately a four fifths of international water inflow was concentrated from the United States, Brazil, India, Indonesia, and uh, Russia. The water-intensive products and the services produced in Beijing were mainly exported to developed countries. The urban total energy water land flows nexus are impacted at this figure. EWL flows are traced at multiple scale, both from production and consumption perspectives. As can be seen from this figure, Beijing production-based EWL flows were 40 million ton, 3,000 million ton, and uh, 1 million hectares. From a productive uh, perspective, urban local consumption concentrated on the intensive EWL flows. Approximately 50% of production-based EWL flow in Beijing was used by local consumption. Another half was embodied in products for domestic exports and international export. However, from a consumption perspective, 76% of energy, 92% of water, and 96% of land use related to goods consumed in Beijing are carried outside of city boundaries. Beijing largely relies on outside EWL resources nexus, of which the majority of embodied EWL flow nexus are found in domestic imports regions, accounting for 56%, 68%, and 62% of energy, water, and land use in Beijing. Thus, Beijing, which largely relies on goods produced elsewhere, imposed an embodied EWL flow to other regions, since only 24% of energy 8% of water and 4% of land use were supplied locally. And let's move to part 3, structure analysis and environmental impact analysis. As we said before, exploring the interactions between FEW resources and economic activities when investigating FEW provisions to meet urban demand through trade. It's very essential to find effective policy intervention points and priority areas for actions. 
So we investigate external binding FEW resources flows with internal sentence interlinkages driven by final demand of Beijing city at different nodes along their supply chains. The results show that Beijing city has been highly dependent on other regions for FEW inputs to satisfy its final consumption. The key sources regions present overall neighborhood pattern that Hebei in Mongolia, Anhui, Jiangsu, and Shandong near Beijing are the five leading contributors of trans-regional FEW provisions. Based on multi-regional input output analysis and the structural path analysis, we identified the critical path and the nodes driven by food and water consumption. Among the innumerable paths, we select the top 20 paths. The most important nexus pathways all starts with the other servants in Beijing. There are six, seven, and three of the top 20 paths for FEW flows associated with other services. Since the FEW flows network driven by the final consumptions crossing regions and uh, industries is very complex. We narrow the final demand to the local share of Beijing to visualize L connections and then identify the key nodes with hub role in controlling FEW flows. Among these 900 sectors of uh, 30 provinces in China, 26 sectors were identified as the key nodes for FEW nexus. Key nodes mainly belong to the provinces of northern and eastern China. For instance, non metal products and manufacturing in Hebei, petroleum refining and coal in Henlongjiang are the top important nodes for FEW flows. This highlights the fact that any solutions to urban FEW nexus problems should have a broader view on city and its heatland regions. At the same time, rapidly rising views and the increased urbanization are driving a global urban dietary transition, which is closely related to global climate change and human health. In such case, we investigated changes in urban diet and related carbon footprint of Beijing from 1980 and 2017. Results showed that urban Beijing has experienced a substantial dietary transition, shifting from a traditional grain-based diet to the one higher in non staple and animal-sourced foods. There is a 41% increase of carbon footprint derived from urban dietary transition. Both trade-off and uh, synergy exist between environmental impact and dietary quality. Next is the forecasting and the policy analysis. The objective of this part is to develop an online open access tool for the policy assessment of cities. We call it Urban Circular Economy Calculator, which enables to develop different scenarios associated to FEW management. The Urban Circular Economy Calculator will provide a picture of a transition during the interim years by simulating the scenarios of circular economy policies. Then, the calculator helps the policymakers create a circular economy pathway based on different FEW tactics and provide system dynamic permitting the prediction of developing trend of a system. In 2017, the Urban Circular Economy Calculator won the finalist award of WEGE Prize, which is the International Student Circular Economy Competition. How to evaluate the efficiency of these circular economy policies? The Urban Circular Economy Calculator can analyze the effectiveness of the present CE policies and different FEW approach in a scenario view. UCEC represents a unique future opportunity through the scenario option, which were changed from a trajectory A to D in our test case. 
The presupposed scenarios will provide different pathways for the desired circular economy future. What's more, long-term simulations are provided by the calculator to test the trajectory of circular economy policy effects and different environmental, economic, and social assumptions. Secondly, the list of policy nexus parameters quantification were conducted. Three scenarios level exist and every policy nexus pathway. Scenario level zero means the business as euro, assuming the government keeps implementation processes as euro from 2000 to 2050. In the case of scenario level one and scenario level two, we suppose that the efficiency of the policy implementation will increase by 10% and 15% with respect to scenario level zero. Based on scenario level zero, there appears some adjustment in parameter setting. The modified parameters are demonstrated in the six tables, taking the food and water systems as the case. We can see that the policies of food water is different from water to food. There are two policies in food water nexus. Uh, there are two policies in water nexus and three in water food nexus. They have different directions. The food to water nexus means the policies focus on food system, but have an impact on the water system. But for water to food means that policies targeted on water system, but will influence food system as well. In this research, we got some preliminary results. Uh, first is about the urban access. Food water policy nexus could aggravate the accumulation of urban access with their increase on the peak value vary from 7% uh, to 16%. But followed by a quicker fall, we can say that the FW policy nexus may increase the risk of accelerated degradation. In contrast, the EW policy nexus could decrease the size of urban access and slow down the pace of decrease. This simulation reveals that FE as well as the WE policy nexus have no consideration influence on the size of urban access compared with FW nexus and vary from 0 to 7%. The WF policy nexus wouldn't influence the AU significant, except for the intensive water saving forming technology, which leads to a 9% decline. In order to achieve the goal of discovering whether the policy nexus pairs will have a further impact on the third one, an additional simulation is performed. Taking EF and FE policy nexus pairs as a case, five policies were considered having such a focus. We noticed that 80% of EF and FE nexus policies will reduce the WR peak by 1% to 7%, delaying also the peak years. The policies which are concentrated on the water system, including WE and WF policies nexus options. The decrease of water resource peaks vary from 0.09% to 0.25%, 0.25%. In other words, the influence on water system caused by policies focused on the energy and agricultural systems might have been privately underestimated. Therefore, policies addressed either on each one or two of the three nexus components will have a broader impact on another system as well. Therefore, the organization should seek advice from a concerned department before a policy or strategy being published, such as a biomass power generation policy. It will have a significant influence on the water resources. So its policy making should have a consult with concerned water department. According to the simulation results, the non-water policies belong to the low-level impact policies. However, all the direct water policies 
have low level impacts on water resources as well. Furthermore, the high level as well as medium level impacts are all caused by indirect water policies, such as various renewable energy policies. This result provides a new perspective for policymakers that the water resources management can be achieved by the adjustment of other systems, such as energy system. The last part is optimization and uh, regulation. This product also studied the joint distribution characteristics of water resources in Beijing, Tianjin, and the Hebei region based on popular function measure. In this research, ARMA model, principal component analysis, and the BP neural network measure are firstly adapted to simulate and uh, borrow cost uh, the supply and the demand of water resources in Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei, respectively. Then, the predicted values of water resources in three regions are taken as the input data of coupler function to establish the marginal distribution function and the joint distribution function of water resources in three regions. Furthermore, the joint distribution characteristics of water resources in three regions can be analyzed, and the dependence response relationship of water resources between the region and the region can be depicted. Then the study has conducted and developed a set of joint risk assessment and management measure based on unbalanced green market chain coupler analysis and uncertainty a stochastic programming model. Uh, this measure the system can predict the future development trend of the water and energy resources identify the complexity and certainty information of the system, deconstruct the water energy nexus to quantify the interdependence relationship between water and energy resources, and then optimize the allocation of urban resources and the condition of meeting risk constraints of the system, so as to provide a guarantee for the joint risk assessment and management of water and energy resources in the city, and to promote the coordinated development of Beijing, Tianjin, and the Hebei region. The framework of uh, water energy joint risk assessment and management method is shown in the figures. In conclusion, the FEW framework to action will include uncovering the nexus, governing the nexus, and implementing the nexus. And that means we should firstly calculate basic data to demonstrate linkages and identify key problems, risks, or opportunities areas. And then guiding an institutional or policy response. Finally, guide a technical intervention to improve efficiency, effectiveness of resources use. However, there are still some real challenges facing with the nexus transition. Uh, such as feasibility of uh, science policy integration, cross-scale inequalities, and uh, pair dependence. As the paper got published in Nature Climate Change Illustrated, the first challenge is the uh, ability of science policy integration. Uh, science policy integration faced with the challenge of moving decision makers beyond their <coughs> accustomed ways of uh, framing and uh, managing Science policy integration involves a collective engagement of uh, disparate interest values and power relations. There is also frequently a mismatch between the geographical and the topical areas of concern and the uh, jurisdiction or knowledge necessary to manage FEW security. The same to cross-scale inequalities and path dependence. For instance, infrastructure and governance regimes shaping urban FEW security may be dynamically stable uh, with a higher degree of path dependence that make them difficult to change. But at the Ramro line course, at worst, we will run the risk of perpetuating the very deep function while trying to repair. That's all for my presentation. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you.